Well, as I did mention, we're going to be able to do this video in the hotel today. So, uh, But after today, we'll be back in our normal spot. However, Leafs lose 4-2, well, 3-2, 4-2 with an empty netter to the Colorado Avalanche. Now, we'll break this thing down, and I will talk about how the uh, goalie interference call for every single team in the NHL is just sad. So, first off, Leafs go down early. Um, you know, the defense obviously not there to cover the rebound. Freddie Anderson makes the initial save. It drops right in front of him. Gabriel Bork bangs in the rebound. It's one nothing Colorado, just 2-19 into the first. We move to the second period, just 19 seconds in. Leo Komarov busts down the left, left side, stops up. Drops it for Patty Marlowe coming off the bench. And, man, does he lay into it. A howitzer from Patrick Marlowe, his 16th of the year. Komarov and Jake Gardner grab assists on that play, and it's 1-1. Not very long after that, probably about, what, four minutes, five minutes or so later. Austin Matthews scramble in front. Austin Matthews, bang, buries it, 2-1 Leafs. Hang on a second. They go to review. They're looking for goal interference. Was there contact? Did he, did he nudge his uh, uh, Bernier's arm? Yes. But the way I like to read this rule is, did Bernier have a chance to make the save? Was he capable? The first thing I look at is Bernier, once the puck is already in the net, going like this. He doesn't know where the puck is. So no matter if there was a little bit of contact, he has no clue where that puck is. Contact or not, if that goes in, he has no clue. Then it would have been a clean goal, but instead Austin Matthews you know, hangs on to the uh, his, his blocker and his stick a little bit, but it wasn't holding on. It was just he pushed it a bit. Instead, no goal. Stupid. But it's still 1-1. Next shift out there for Austin. William Nylander busting down the right side. Low shot, pad, rebound. Matthews buries it. And I love this sell. He turns around. Good goal. You're darn right that was a good goal, Austin. I mean, that's called superstar talent. Your previous shift, you get a goal taken away. You saw the emotion on the bench. You were like, He was like, are you stupid? And then he comes out for the next shift. And buries one to make it 2-1. A minute and a half later, however, Borgman fans on his pass. Colorado comes down to the 2-on-1. Kerfoot over to Yakupov. He buries it. And it's 2-2. We head to the intermission tied to twos. So in the third period. Just I, 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 bonehead play by Austin Matthews. As much as I love him. That was his mistake. It's kind of a, a two-on-one coming back. Soderberg kind of slap passes to Blake Como. He tips a five-hole. But you watch the replay. Austin Matthews is right there, just not being strong, not putting an effort in there. That's one where you got to, if it takes a penalty to haul that guy down, fine. But you got to get body on body. You can't leave him wide open. And he tips a 5-hole. Landis Cog with the empty netter. And the Leafs lose 4-2. So the offense, after scoring 4 against Ottawa, they scored 2 again today. However, very entertaining game though. I mean, it was back and forth chances. Shots were 35-28 in favor of the Leafs. I've noticed a lot of the times the Leafs outshoot teams, they lose. But they get outshot by a mile, they win. And it's very confusing. Uh, Freddie Anderson made some big saves today. Uh, would have loved another big save. However, you can't bail. I mean, he only gave up three goals. But your team only scored two. And off, I mean, the Leafs had some tons and tons of chances. But of course, as I said at the end of last video, Jonathan Bernier is here against his former team. What else do we expect but him to get a dub? And uh, the Colorado Avalanche, after last year's whatever you want to call that, have now won 10 straight games, and they're 11 games over 500, 27 and 16. That's unbelievable. That's fantastic. The Colorado Avalanche have been dynamite this season, especially as of late. Now, for the Leafs, 
you come home after that big Ottawa game and you lose. And it's tough. I get it. And it's greasy. I get it. Problem? Morgan Riley placed on the injured reserve earlier today. We know Zaitsev's hurt. And I understand we got the win against Ottawa. Not going to be easy the rest of the way. Because your next game for this team is Wednesday. In Chicago, taking on the Blackhawks. 8 p.m. puck drop there. That's not... I don't give a darn. Their record, 22-18-6. I don't, I don't care. They're the Chicago Blackhawks. Doesn't matter. You gotta find a way. It is not gonna be easy. Expected to be Jeff Glass and Net uh, that game, but you don't... I mean, you don't look at that and say, ah, oh, it's an easy win. You gotta come out flying. You know, you got to come out like you did in the third period against Ottawa. You got to come out like you did early in the second period today. This team's just got to find a way to put 60 solid minutes together against a very good Chicago Blackhawks team. And then, on a back-to-back, you go to Dallas. 8.30 puck drop there on Thursday. And uh, then it's the All-Star break. So you have two games left before the All-Star break in Chicago and in Dallas. Not an easy task. Plus, you've lost Morgan Riley and Zaitsev, so it's not going to be easy for this team. However, if they come to play, we all know they can do it. All right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. You guys enjoyed this video. And, uh, I mean, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this game, because it was, it was a great game overall. However, the ending sucked. You know, that's the way it goes. Uh, hey, hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. And comment down below. What did you guys think of that um, goaltender interference call? Non-biased Leaf fan, all right? I want to hear what you guys have to say from an NHL standpoint. In your opinion, is that goaltender interference? Now, yeah, did he make contact and, you know, could have Bernier made some miraculous save? Maybe. But it's a fetch. I want to hear what you guys have to say about that, and uh, we'll talk to you guys uh, well, not tomorrow. We have our day, our day off tomorrow. Um, and we'll pick it back up on Wednesday as uh, the Raptors are in Atlanta taking on the Hawks after their very tough loss uh, a couple nights ago to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, that's a must win. I mean, they're a team down in the, way down in the standings. Got to find a way to get a victory. And as for the Leafs, like we've been saying, they pick it up Wednesday as well in Chicago taking on the Blackhawks. If we can get back in the win column, that'd be great. I'd love to win these last two games heading into the All-Star break. It's not going to be easy. Got to take it one game at a time. 8 p.m. in Chicago. Blackhawks. Leafs. We'll talk to you guys then.